Praise God. Have you started living? <laughs> if you don't know Jesus, hey, you're dead, my friends. And if you want to be quickened and be alive, believe on him and be saved. Well, I want to thank the cathedrals for that wonderful song I just started living. I love the way that man sings with such powerful emotion. You know, friends, I may not be the best preacher in the world, and I know I'm not, in fact, but there's one thing that you have to say about Tex Moore's. I really believe with passion in my heart. I know what I tell you is true. And I know it's true because it comes from the Word of God. Well, we're studying the true church of the living God. It is a living church. It is alive and it lives forevermore. And it lives in the very bosom of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to read to you a little bit about the church of the living God. This is from Ephesians 4, verses 4 through 6. God says there is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Now, if you want to know <laughs> what the church of the living God is, I don't know of anything I can say that is more powerful than that one verse. A lot of people like to say there are many bodies. There's a, a body of the Lord in uh, uh, Toledo, Ohio, and one in Muskogee, Oklahoma, and there's another one in up in uh, uh, Renton, Washington, and another one down in Orlando, Florida. Well, you got it all mixed up. There may be local uh, churches with a small C, but when you go to that big church with a capital C, when you're talking about one body, one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, some people ask me, well, Tex, do you believe that Christians are saved and then later on they receive the Holy Ghost? Well, absolutely not. I believe when they're saved, they receive the Holy Ghost. And let me tell you something else, though. You know, God will give you more. He can give you more later on. That's right. <laughs> he can uh, keep filling you up. You know, I don't know if we can take all that God has for us anyway. I don't know if our human minds are even built to take everything that God is. But uh, the Apostle Paul said that, one day we will be like him. That doesn't mean we're going to be God, but it does mean we're going to have more of him. And I believe that's our whole mission on earth, to become more like God. Now, friends, I'm not saying this is not, I'm try, not trying to make you into a God. I don't think you're ever going to quite make that. But wouldn't it be wonderful to be a little bit more like Jesus? That's all I'm saying. To be as close to his example as you can. Jesus said, be thou perfect because that your father in heaven is perfect. Well, you say, well, I can't be perfect no matter what I do. Well, of course you cannot in your own strength. And God knows you're not perfect. Believe me, he knows of our failings. But he will give you the strength as you strive for perfection. And you shouldn't feel terrible that you don't make it. You know, every day I look in the mirror and I'm reminded that I am just immortal. Every day I see a new little wrinkle or some little imperfection. I never was real pretty. I mean, I, I remember when I was a kid, I didn't have a lot of freckles, but I had a few. Didn't have a lot of pimples, but I had a few. There's always a blemish on each of our bodies, isn't there? But uh, let me tell you something, my friends. There is no blemish. In the church of Jesus Christ. Did you know that it says there in the book of Revelation that he's coming again for a church without spot or wrinkle? That's right. I have spots right now in my face, on my body. I have some, a few wrinkles. I'm not that old, but I have a few. But hey, when God gives me my immortal body, I bet I'm prettier than y'all. I don't know. Well, we shouldn't be thinking about terms like that. And because our bodies may be something we can't even perceive. They may not even be 
in a sense, physical. You know, Paul says we see through a, a glass dimly. And uh, we don't know it all. But I know one thing. I'm looking forward to that day. And right here on earth, I want you to understand something. If you believe in Jesus and you're saved, you're one body with me. He's the head, of course. And you're under one spirit. Now, Jesus said that he stands at the door and knocks. And if you open that door, he will come in and sup with you. And you'll be an overcomer. We read that last week in the book of Revelation. This is how you are baptized into one, one spirit, into the one body of Christ. You say, well, now wait, text. When you're saved, Jesus comes into your heart. That's true. But a little bit later, you can receive the gift of tongues and you can be, you know, filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, what you don't understand is certainly there is a Holy Ghost. But you see, Jesus, it says very clearly, is fully God. And the Holy uh, Ghost is uh, the, 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 the being that points people to Jesus. He is the comforter that Jesus has sent. And he, the Holy Ghost, witnesses of Jesus. He doesn't do anything on his own. He's there because you have Jesus. And I want you to read that again. What do we have? According to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 through 6, we have one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. You say, well, now I was saved, but I don't have Jesus' Holy Spirit in me. Well, then you don't have Jesus. <laughs> because it says right here, there's only one baptism. And he is in you all. The Apostle Paul spoke of Christ in you, the hope of glory. You say, well, I don't have Christ in me yet because I haven't spoken in tongues. My friends, if you don't have Christ in you, you don't have any hope of glory. You don't have anything. You're an empty vessel. But the minute you accept Jesus, he will come into your heart. Now, I... Fully believe, of course, that there are many infillings of the Spirit. And I, I, w I, I love for Jesus to anoint me and to give me more of the, you might say, more of the Holy Ghost. I really do. Who would want to turn that down? But I know this from the moment I accepted Jesus, He came into my heart. And the Spirit of the living God resided in me. And there is only one spirit, one body, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. When we're talking about the church, the true church of the living God, this is the meaning of the one body. Let me read to you now from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It says, For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Are you a member of the church of the living God? Then you're a part of the body of Christ. There are many who are members, but we're all one body. A lot of people can't figure that out. But just as our own bodies have uh, ten fingers and ten toes and two ears, at least most of us do. Uh, you see, we have uh, parts. And all of these members are connected with one body. And so we, each of us who know Jesus, are members of that one body whose head is Christ. And a lot of people say, well, you know, you ask them what you are. And they say, well, I'm a Baptist. Oh, you, well, you're not a Christian then? Oh, well, yeah, I'm a Baptist Christian. And they like to distinguish themselves on what they the, the little, their little brand that they are. Well, I'm a Catholic. Is that right? Well, that's wonderful. Maybe someday you could become a Christian. If you accept Jesus. Now, I'm being a little facetious here, but isn't that true? How we put ourselves in little compartments and we say this compartment is the one that is true. Well, I want you to understand something today, my friends. If you have Jesus in your heart, and you believe in this book that I'm holding in my hands, which is the Holy Bible, then you are members of the 
true living church of the true living God. And you have the one spirit in your heart. You are baptized in the name of Jesus and in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Because it says in John there that there are three that bear record in heaven and these three are one. A lot of people say, well, Tex, should I be baptized in the name of Jesus? Absolutely. Well, what about what Jesus when he said, baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? Well, I tell you the way I do it. When I baptize a person, I baptize them in the name of Jesus. And then I read right there from the gospel. There are three that bear record of this baptism in heaven. And these three are one. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So will you take care of, you, you, you make sure you, uh, uh, you know, cover all grounds, don't you? No, I'm just telling you the truth. You can't separate God from his spirit. You can't separate the spirit from Christ. You have either got all three or you don't have any. Well, I've got Christ Jesus, but I don't have the Holy Ghost. Is that right? You've just separated Christ from his spirit. I don't think you can do that. No human being can do that. <laughs> oh, well, you know, so many people have misunderstood these kinds of things. And they want to use words like Trinity. I never use the word Trinity around Bible Home Church. It's not in the Bible. You say, but then you don't believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? Of course I do. I don't use the word rapture around here either. I like catching up. It says there in First Thessalonians, you know, that we're going to be caught up to be with the Lord. Some folks say, well, I don't believe in the rapture. Well, how about believing in the catching up? <laughs> and that's what I believe in here because that's very biblical. Well, I don't believe in the Trinity. Well, do you believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? Well, yes, I do. Well, okay. If you believe that with all of your heart, you're saved, you repented of your sins, then, my friends, you are a member of the church of the living God. And uh, we can quibble over semantics all we want to. And I understand these are matters of grave importance. But so many Christians have banged their heads against walls for absolutely nothing. Well, Let's talk a little bit about churches, about churches. You know, we founded Bible Home Church some time ago as a congregation of believers united under the authority of Jesus Christ, Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Some people say, well, now, Tex, are you incorporated? Have you got 501c3 status under the IRS? Uh, you, you know, are you, have you got some kind of a ordination and have you got all this? Well... I just told you what I've got. Not too long ago, a, a, a owner of a, a so-called Christian radio station just got furious at me. I say not too long ago. Actually, it's been quite a while ago. Remember, when you get a little older, like Tex Mars, you say not too long ago, you have to listen to perspective uh, and, and think about it a little bit. Not too long ago to a man 90, and I'm not anywhere near 90, believe me, folks. But when you say you're 90 and the man says, not too long ago, he might mean 40 years ago. I said that on the radio, well, not too long ago. <laughs> okay. A few months ago, I said, not too long ago, I had a Chevrolet car, and his fuel filter kept called me, caused me problems. The man, you know, sort of challenged that and said, you didn't have that Chevrolet for years. Well, that's true. But for me, it's sort of not too long ago. Well, in any case, the fact is, not too long ago, which, uh, as I remember, was about 10 years ago, he called me up, and you see, I had exposed so-called Christian heavy metal rock music. And boy, he was mad at me, this station manager. He said, don't you know how wonderful this Christian heavy metal rock music is? Oh, it's great for the kids, blah, blah, blah. I told him it was from the pit of hell, and I wasn't going to back down one bit. And if he never had me on his radio station again, that was just fine with Tex Mars. Well, I was trying to be generous, but that's sort of the summation of what I told the gentleman. He said, I'm going to report you to a higher authority. He said, under whose authority is your ministry? I said, well, I'll tell you what, if you report me to that higher authority... And that higher authority tells me to stop preaching this. I will do it instantly. 
He said, well, just give me his name. I said, well, Jesus. He said, no, no, I mean here. I mean, uh, under what church is your, your ministry? I said, well, the church of the living God. No, 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 you've got to have a headquarters. Who, who, who is a, do you have a, an overseer? Do you have a bishop? Do you have a pastor? Always love people like that that just don't quite understand. They don't quite get it. You see, the church of the living God and the body of Christ is made up of believers united under the authority of Jesus Christ, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Now, you can report Tex Mars to all the authorities on earth. You can go to the National Association of Evangelicals and the Christian Booksellers Association. You can go to the governing body of the Seventh-day Adventist Church or the United Pentecostal Church or the Southern Baptist Convention. That's not going to do you one bit of good. You say, well, I'll get the government to take away all of your property. Well, big deal. I'll just get my little soapbox and go out there to the, to the parks and on the streets and I'll preach some more. Might even preach in front of your home and make your life miserable till you get right with the Lord. You never know, friend. So <laughs> these kinds of things happen. God will make you miserable when you're not following God. Well, what does Bible Home Church stand for? Well, we worship God. We obey Jesus Christ, our Savior. We follow his call and admonition. And we don't follow the call of anybody else or anything else. And we believe in doing all that God instructs us in his word, the Holy Scriptures. The IRS came down here to audit and they said, by what authority have you been exposing immorality in the White House? What's your authority? I showed them the Bible. They said, no. You, you know, this was, by the way, before we founded Bible Home Church. And back then we had the 501c3 ministry. Now, as you know, power of prophecy is not 501c3. It's not government operated, you might say anymore, not government regulated. But the IRS agent wanted to know what authority I had as a Christian ministry. I showed him the Bible. He said, well, that's not good enough. I said, well, then you'll have to write me up <laughs> by your authority, which is Caesar. But under this authority, I'm going to continue to preach. Because our source can only be Jesus Christ. That's the source of the true church of the living God. And you know, Bible home church is made up of individual believers of all races, ethnic groups, and backgrounds, all who are led by the Holy Spirit. And together we comprise a congregation that is an inseparable part of the worldwide body of Christ, of which Jesus is the head. If you want to become a part of this church, my friends, Believe in Jesus. Now, if you want to get on our membership roll, we'd love to hear from you. Just write to us, Bible Home Church. But to be a true member, believe on the name of Jesus and be saved and be baptized in his name. Well, this is Tex Mars. Thank you so much for another week. And uh, tune in next week as we continue our series. We're examining the true church of the living God. If you're thirsty and dry. It's beginning to rain. You've been listening to Pastor Tex Mars and Bible Home Church. Please join with us in worship next week as we continue to honor the remarkable Word of God.